Hey guys, welcome back. It's Lucid. We're back with Lanka. Uh, with Lanka, we're back with Late Age Relay. I cannot read the word Lanka and say Relay at the same time, apparently. And we've got a new turn. Pretty good turn. Site search, and we found a kelp grip. I think there's a nature one. For some reason, I'm. Yeah. It's going to be a pretty good province. Strike, Astral Window. I can't remember what we were looking for here. I think there was a battle there, maybe. Here we found a very good set of sites uh, with Voice of Tiamat. Depths Unnamed is a two water gem site. And then Clam of uh, Clam Field is a pearl and 30 gold. So this is now a hundred gems. I mean, a hundred gold site. Uh, very nice. Strike, strike, strike. Moving Sandbag, so that's one Earth Gem. Strike, 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 strike. And then we summoned our Flame Spirit and uh, Voice of Tiamat we cast. And I think we're going to rename this dude. We're going to rename him to Why Must I Take Down Fire. So some context, no globals have gone up this turn. We'll talk spells while we're doing spells. Um, er, Kangobia has Mana, Heavens, and Eternal Pyre up. And uh, Eternal Pyre, we are not cool with anybody having that up but us. Because we want to control Tower of Heaven. And we have come to realize a bit of a problem. I know y y some of y'all remember I was clicking around and we saw these Draken Totems. I was like, what the hell are those? Because they don't have any, you can't see anything from clicking on them. And I was like, what are these? And so anyway, Kangobia in chat last night started saying, Hey guys, if you give me your Fire Gems... I will pay you back 150% of whatever you give me over the course of a year, right? So you basically get some profit for giving him fire gems. And I was like, what is the scheme here? What is he doing that makes this a thing? And I asked him and he didn't answer. So I got to snooping around in the mod and I figured out what these sites were. So these sites, they give you basically like mana from heaven, but for fire gems. So basically you preach and you have a 20% per preacher of getting uh, one to three, basically two fire gems. So, <coughs> so yeah, you get two fire gems basically per site. If you have enough preachers there, of course you can never get a hundred percent chance of getting one, but with like, I don't know, seven preachers, you're going to get one, like, a very high percentage of the time. Um, so I think a way to think about them is they're about, like, 1.7 fire gems per, which is obviously very strong. Yeah. So, and the other thing is they're permanent, and they only cost 12 fire gems. So he has a system where basically he gets unlimited fire income. And he didn't think to mention this specifically, because I like when we were reviewing the nation, I looked at it, I tried expansion, I tested all the units out. I didn't want to try all the spells. So I asked him to just tell me like which were the important spells that might cause balance issues. He, uh, he left this one out because I'm a positive, I would have told him what I have told him now, which is that this nation does not need recruit foreign recruit slash recruit anywhere sacreds they get anakite key anakite tier cap only units these red guard are absolutely ridiculous right so these they get these guys everywhere any place they have a temple and they're really good especially with the larger bless because they repel and then kangobia is going to take a huge hell bless they get these guys who are absolutely ridiculous they get free spawn they actually have really good mages they're nature two mages which you would think might suck are actually really good. They can do Horde of Skeletons with spiders, basically. The Fire Mages can do Fire Elementals. Fire Twos are always nice to have, and they're pretty cheap for what you get. And then they get these guys, which are Air Twos, or... I mean, you're going to get some of them which are just Lab Rats, which is fine. You need Lab Rats, too. But the Air and the, the Nature ones, like whenever they roll one of these, the Nature ones, again, have like Horde of Skeletons with Spiders Casters, or they can do other buffs. And the air ones are going to be, you know, air elementals and aerofend. And if you put them in a communion or something or, which is a little tricky, you don't really have obvious communion, but you can get, you know, from air two, you can get like a crystal shield and get up to air three, which is enough to do mass flight with your hordes, which is a big deal. Anyway, they have pretty good mages, but, and he's like, he's anyway, there's a bunch of stuff. I'm not going to go into all of it, but 
they get huge amounts of respawn. They get sacreds. They have this global. Oh, I can't show it to you here. They have a global which gets them these like super combatant tier dragon lord dude. And if you put them in an enemy capital, it will spawn a site that makes their bless better, which is kind of cool. And it costs fire gems, but like the idea is it's a global and you're only going to get those sites so long as you can keep the global up and keeping the global up is hard. Well, the thing is the global costs fire gems. And conveniently, this nation has the best gem generating site in the game where they just can build these totems. I think it's at construction five or something or four. And um, yeah, it pays itself back in like seven turns and then is rest present with you for the rest of the game. So anyway, he's agreed that it was broken and uh, he's not taking it out of this game. He said he won't build as many. We have eyes of God, so we'll be able to see how many he builds. But the important context of this is not only is this upsetting and broken that the guy playing the nation he designed put in stuff like that, which anyway, I, it, he... I think it's not exactly malicious. I think he just doesn't realize fully the consequences of his actions. Anyway, but not only is it that, but it's going to fuck with my thing. Because my thing right now is going to be controlling goddamn fire globals, which I've spent every goddamn gem I have setting up to do. But apparently I might not be able to do it, not for normal Dominion's reasons, but because somebody just gets infinite fire income. Though right now he's probably only got, I think he's got seven of these, so he's getting about like 15 a month. So it's basically like he has eternal fire up, but like a budget version, slightly budget. But he'll be putting more of those up with the gems that are coming from Pyre. The good news, and why I went into this whole diatribe, is we're going to be stealing it from him. Because fuck that noise. Aren't you glad we're being... We were, guys, we came up with this plan like... I don't know what it was exactly, but it feels like six turns ago. And we have been rapidly working towards it. We came up with this whole plan to get Pyre. Because we realized we didn't have any Dreamers. So we can't do our own Jim Jim. And we need... To get Dreamers, we need money. Uh, we need Dominion. And to get Dominion, we need money to make temples and stuff. So anyway, we got on this whole thing where we decided to try to put up Tower of Heaven. And to control it with all these Fire Nations in the game, we're going to need Pyre, which is absolutely true now. Especially seeing what Boz is doing over here with Kangobia, the the balanced, most balanced of all nations. Now look guys, LA Relay is also not very well balanced, I don't think. In some ways this video, this whole series I think will be a proof that it is way overtuned. It is an outlier in strength for DE. But I don't, I, I think if I were playing Kangobia, I mean, part of the reason later that I'm doing so well, the main reason I'm doing so well is because I got all this territory by controlling choke points, all right? The other re I would have still done very well without that because I would have used my god instead of to get all this really cool expansion done, I would have used my god to murder somebody early. So I would have already finished my second w war now rather than now I'm just beginning persecuting it. And I'd probably be maybe even finishing my third war. So I would have been much more aggressive if I wasn't doing all this. But this path I think that I took was preferable to the other path of having to fight for my lands where I just took it from Mindy's. Anyway, so anyway, a lot of my power comes from the geography and how I took advantage of it. But that being said, Lady Relay is still a very strong nation. There is no way I would play this nation if I designed it. I think it's way too strong. So like there's a lot of power creep in DE. Dominions enhance the mod we're using. and But I, in my opinion, Late Age Relay is an outlier to that. Like, it is an exceptionally strong nation. And Kangobia, I think, is, you know, an even stronger nation. They've got this and then this. And they're an even stronger nation than Relay with how they're set up in the game right now. I think if you got... This Jim Jin just completely breaks it. They In no way do they need it. Anyway, we're, we're not going to keep going on about it, but... That's my little tirade. Uh, fortunately, we will be doing our part to help control it. And we're going to put more gems than you ever thought possible. We're going to put 379, 75 fire gems in here. I want you to just watch me cast it. Look at this. Oh, so many gems. We had to sell our soul for each one of these. Every little one of these gems is a trade. I think that's what we're going to do. Okay? 
So that is a lot. Nobody will expect, I don't think, Relay to put 375 gems into it. So we'll see. Hopefully I can. they're going to try to overcast it and fail. That is my guess. They're probably going to think I put like 200 gems in it. And they're going to be like, oh, we'll put 300. No, I put 375, motherfucker. 375! This is going to stay up a long time, I think. This actually, in some ways, is the best chance of derailing this whole thing. The other thing, too, is these guys are all little, little fuckers. They're working together. I'm pretty sure... He's the, so the, there's all these weird little things where people are, you know, trading their gems to like there's these nations that have huge trade dynamics. So like they're trading their gems with Arethia and you know they're trading with Kangobia to get like in this little fire pyramid scheme, which is going to be a little bit of a pyramid scheme when we start making it fall apart with Eternal Pyre coming down. I may steal mana from heaven. Let me see what it takes to cast it. Do, 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 where are you? Mana from heaven. Yeah, we could totally cast. How would we do it? We Did we empower? We have an empowered nature too. He's up here. And I think this is him. Right here. So he could probably cast it. He would, yeah, he would need a moonvine bracelet and that's it. And we have a pretty healthy nature income. 25. It's probably a bit less than Kingobia with that up. The problem is if I put it up, people... It's going to make people do suicidal things, which I don't want to do still. But fire... Controlling Eternal Pyre won't. Anyway. Get fucking wrecked, Kingobia. Unless this somehow doesn't work. In which case, if he put it up with more than that, I'm going to be the one getting wrecked. I'm pretty sure he didn't. Okay, let's look at the rest of the turn. So we have some battles. Um, here we kill these Huskarls. Somehow I managed to lose on my Lobo Guard. Watch this guy. Get them experience stars. I wish I had quickness on him too. This guy does so well with the fluffer. Just one of my slave mages fluffing this guy is ridiculous. Just body of because every slave mage can do body ethereal and quickness, and those are like dream buffs for him. But anyway, he got his first experience star, eleven kills. So that was that battle. Here we just do some raiding into some PD. He actually had a decent amount of PD here. I think this was just twenty. Which isn't that much, but it, you know, it cost him. Here we're raiding into Yomi. We want to get this province right there with the uh, broken tower. It is a non-optional acquisition. And we see Ash dot attacking Yuria. It's just a commander. You get to see their bless meditation. What are they? Shock resistance, cold resistance, blood surge, undead leadership. That's cool. Okay, and then we are taking this. This is right near our throne. So a little raiding squad that's going to be heading underwater. Here we can see Vanheim attacking. I don't know if I've really looked at his bless yet. I think it, we have. I think it's a normal elf bless. Seriously, not bless his dudes. How do you not bless any of your dudes? Okay, that one's blessed. Attack shock resistance 15, so that means wrathful skies. Fire resistance, cold resistance, magic resistance strength. So pretty light bless. I wonder if he's got something coming on. I think it would be awake with imprisoned, but. And then a bunch of our rituals for the normal events, bad event. Neutral, bad, dire important. Oh, there was one. So this is a this is a global, I guess. So Kalasa, I forget what this does. But anyway, they this is like a global that doesn't take a global spot basically for them. We found a foul spawn. We need to start getting a little void gate factory up. 
Uh, and we got a, a hero. We got a Ludolot. And um, kind of cool. He's a very high water mage. We can get him up to Astral 7 and up to Water 7. To get up to Water 7 is a bit tricky. We need our Ring of Wizardry and then a Water Booster, like the Water Bracelet. But then we need one more, like... The, there's a few artifacts that do it. The Orb of Atlantis is one of them. I think there's a couple other ones. But he also summons dudes. I'm not exactly sure what he summons. I think it's little baby versions of him. We can't see any here, but... This guy's actually really good underwater rating. You can teleport him on top of stuff. And he can make a lot of water elementals very, very quickly. And you throw like a Ring of Returning on him. And yeah. It's a pretty damn safe way to raid. It's a little gem expensive. Okay, so let's take a look at our theater of war. Um, we had moved here and we just found a tiny bit of PD. He seems to have taken this stack, which was here, and moved it back to the capital to defend. And he took, wait, what, was it? what did he have? I can't remember. Oh, somehow there's more guys here. Oh, they're making long debt. Well, we're not going to care about that. We are not going to care about that. We're going to raid over here because it's pretty safe. I don't think it's likely he moves his whole cap force out. In fact, I think he probably is going to like defend his capital. We could move here too. The nice thing about moving here, it's a three gem site, which is nice. But the actual nice thing about moving here is it puts us in a position to check this fort. And if we check this fort next turn, it's going to be pretty important. Because we're teleporting in a nature mage from over here on the jellyfish. He, this guy is teleporting in. And why that's important is because this turn we are finishing enchantment seven, which gives us serpent's blessing. Which means we can just gas him. We're going to just do foul vapors and he's going to be very, 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 very. Now, the other thing I want to do is um, I want to run up to Enchantment 8. And Enchantment 8 is going to give me a few things. I think my next war target, assuming I stay at peace with the underwater bros, I think my next war target is probably going to be Asphodel. And they've got this weird, what should we call it? Aura Bless. So they've got Chill Aura, they've got Heat Aura. This will allow us for our important stacks to do... Uh, Firefend and Frostfend. And normally we wouldn't even be able to do Firefend, but we have with us in our power these fire guys from that throne. So assuming we can put, you know, flying boots on them or whatnot, we can send them where they need to go. And that is going to be rather important for fighting Asphodel because we can now do Firefend and Cold Resistance and Mass Regen. And that will be kind of ridiculous. They're going to be very, very strong. What is Stone Awakening? Let me get a Stone Monster and some moving statues. So anyway, that's all, in my opinion, rather important for us. We'd also do Thunderfend. I don't think that's going to be a thing for Asphodel. But Frostfend is going to completely neuter Jotunheim. If for whatever reason, this is like a safety measure. If I need to fight the Jotunheim, Frostfend will guarantee he can't cheese me with his little cold regening dudes. If my guys aren't getting fatigued out, they will chop his dudes up in melee. Especially because now we already have it. Or we're going to have it next turn. We're going to have protection of the void. So I'm also building pin gear. Because you actually need magic penetration to cast this on your own dudes. So yeah, we're going to be building pin gear. Dropping protection of the void on... Uh, on our army that we move on top of that fort. I probably should ping it this turn so that he knows that it's coming. I want him to put everything he can in defending it. And then we're going to gas him. And then we're going to gas him. It's going to be epic. So, yeah. I think he's going to be in really big trouble. If he has Scrotty that we can't kill, that would be a little bit annoying but I think we can manage Scrotty. We're going to have Mind Blasters and Soul Slayers. I think they'll get fucked. Um, and I'm, I'm going to have my God present, so... I think we okay. I could also send my God here, I, but I, I don't need to play Risky. Splitting my God up from my army would be greedy, because it would net me more, but it opens up a like a, chalier, a failure chance, which I don't really have right now, so I think we're just going to have them roll together. 
This is a lot of carry-on beasts. And we're very close to getting this. Fortunately, TNG hasn't raided, and they've also cracked their capital. So um, I think we're going to... Where did I do it this turn? Oh, yeah, we watched this battle here this turn where he stormed the, the fort. I think what we're going to do this coming turn... Where did I cast Astral Window? I've already taken the item off. Let's put it back on somebody. I want to watch... If I can, I want to watch this guy's preaching, which is not doing anything. I want to watch cast spell astral window. I want to watch this battle if we can. Oh, so that will be nice. We'll get to see exactly what TNG is working with. And meanwhile, we're going to go ahead and take this. Now, TNG may not be happy about this, but I don't care. I'm willing to fight a war over this. I'm, I'm actually kind of inclined to kill TNG, except I like the player and I don't know. They've been peaceful and friendly and all of that jazz. But I mean, this would be a nice little addition. The problem if I do this, so I could either A, kick him off of the planet, at which point he might just be in a forever war with me. Because if somebody kill does this to you, but they don't want to finish you off, I mean, who else are you going to fight? So I don't know. In many ways, this would put TNG into like forever war territory to kick him off. The other thing is if I have a strong presence down here, I need to be ready to fight Ulm and Iru or whoever it is. And I'll be ready for that pretty soon, to be honest. But I'm not ready for it right now. But I have a lot of decisions to make after this. I can choose to go for, for Asphodel. I can choose... So after I kill Jotunheim... This is now talking a bit far ahead. But after I kill Jotunheim, I have options. I could kick Tilly and Chi off, off Blandos. Which I think I'm not going to do unless he's unhappy with me taking these three provinces. If he's unhappy, I'm going to kick him off Blandos. If he is happy, then I think I'm just going to settle to have the top half of Blandos and we'll stay at peace. In that case, my options are go after Asphodel, which I think makes a lot of sense just to get this thrown. That's one of the main things. The other thing is we're going to be running up Thaumaturgy. I, by about the time we're fighting Asphodel, there's a decent chance we'll be Thaum... I don't know if we'll be Thaum 9... But we'll be high thaumaturgy. I think it might be the first thing I take to nine. I don't. I can't really think of a reason not to. Let me look at all the things in thaumaturgy while we're sitting. Okay, so we already know about the normal things, which are the gates. Whispers of Relay is a really cancerous global. It's basically enemy provinces are going to gain turmoil and magic and have a chance to suffer minus one dominion unrest and temple destroyed or avoid cult. These are all very annoying things. Um... And then we get extra mad hybrids and friendly co uh, forts, coastal forts, which we turn into void critters. So a very strong global for me, but it's also kind of cancerous. I, I kind of, I'm not usually going to put up a cancer global like this unless my diplomacy goes to shit. So in some ways, me not doing it is like a reward for people for not being nasty and trying to team up on me. Okay. So anyway... That is Whispers of Relay. Coming down, we have... Uh, what next? Yeah, a bunch of these are kind of cool. Okay, here's one reason to not go Thumb 9 first. Is if I go Enchantment 9, I get some of my best spells. So I think we need to take a look at... I mean, at not Enchantment, Alteration 9. Let me take a look at Alteration and some of the stuff we get. One is Into the Void at Alt-8, which gives literally everything on my battlefield uh, body ethereal, which makes fighting underwater, like, trivial. Because enemy water elementals can't hit you very well. You can walk through fort walls, which is normally, like, the worst part of fighting underwater. We're also going to get Will of Fates, which is obviously ridiculous. Like, fighting lucky ethereal meteorite guard in darkness, oh my god. So that's completely broken. And then importantly, we get uh, Wish. And Army of Gold and Army of Lead, which we can also do reasonably trivially. But Wish is important for us. One of the reasons that Wish is important is uh, that allows us to get the Nazca hero, which is what we want to do with Apotheosis. That's going to be our second god, is the first couple. So getting this allows us to snipe it, and it also gives us really strong things. So it may be we go up to Thom 7. We're definitely going to Thom 7. It may be we go to Thom 7, and then we stop here, right, before going farther. Because we want to get, you know, the, whatchamacallit, 
the first couple, plus all the other good stuff Alteration has. That being said, there are compelling reasons to go higher. Going to eight is going to give us Lords of, or er, yeah, Lords of Void, which are ridiculously strong. And we can repeat cast these if we do Lichcraft on some of them or turn into the Iron Golem thing on some of them. So, you know, it's expensive. It'll end up being like 80 gems for just the chassis to mass create them versus just 50 for the first chassis if you don't mass create them. But they're really strong chassis. So, you know, this is a pretty good option. That's it. None of these are as strong as the first couple. And the first couple is like game winningly strong. Okay, next we have Terrors of the Void, which is also pretty fucking good. Basically, everybody's going to have to pass and it's an MR check or they're going to become insane and uh, confused. And they're going to start attacking their, their bedmates. Now, usually it's going to be better to just um, steal them, you know, like with Master and Slave. Like, why would you... If they're going to fail an MR check, why not just make them your units? So, the thing is, this is less pearls. So... You know, there's a spot for for this spell, I think. But it just emphasizes how much you need MR on your guys fighting relay. The other thing going up to Enchantment 8 gives is it gives us Magic of the Fae, which our Selkie can actually cast, which we're going to be starting to get soon. And this is going to be a bit ridiculous. It's going to potentially improve or reduce the enemy MR by three, maybe only two if they're already in magic scales. But if they're not in magic scales, it'll reduce it by three, I believe. It's also going to make spell casting a bit easier if you're in drain. So that's a pretty strong spell. And it's going to work exceptionally well in combination with, well, all of my soul slay stuff with withering weapons, which is on my bless. It's also going to work very well with protection of the void, which gives all my guys astral shield. So I forgot. Yeah, if we go, let's say we go Thom 8. And then enchantment, I mean, then alteration nine, and then thumb nine. At once we have alt nine, our meteorite guard are gonna have like 17 ish MR. They're gonna have astral shield on them. They're gonna have region on them. They're going to be ethereal. They're going to be lucky. Yeah. And the enemy is going to have a two MR penalty. So they're going to get the shit zapped out of them by Astral Shield. And then once we get Thumb 9, we're just going to steal all of their stacks anyway. So it doesn't matter. And then, yeah, the Lords of the Void are good. Who else here is good? I mean, this stuff is kind of interesting with Call the Worm that Walks, especially if we found like a discount site. I'm not really sure if we cast this one ever, but yeah. And then obviously there's, there's good stuff down here. One other thing, because we are definitely going Thom 8, not definitely, we're definitely going Thom 7, and we're probably going Enchantment, I'm sorry, Enchantment 7. We're definitely going Enchantment 7. That's going to give us a bunch of the things we need, like Serpent's Blessing. We're probably going Enchantment 8. The other thing this gives us is Become Lich. One kind of weird thing is, so when you cast the Stars are Right, you're actually going to get a Super Combatant. And normally he goes away when it's dispelled. But in our case, we can we can summon a Lich and basically replace him with the Lich that's going to be permanent. And then if we ever cast the spell again, we'll get another copy. Um, the guy that comes out is, I think, let's take a look. I've actually got a test game. It's, I'll show you what he'll look like. We'll talk about this spell, because we haven't really talked about it very much. You get... See here? Okay, yeah, this is the guy you get. He's immortal, so because he's immortal, you actually can't do twice-born tricks on him, I don't think. Which what I was testing here. But, yeah, he's Water 3, Astral 4, Death 3, Holy 4. And... Summoning skill, okay, yeah. Anyway, he's also a Dom Spreader, which is kind of cool. Bunch of cool things with him. That being said, I would we can just take him and we cast Become Lich, and then he becomes this dude. Now, we probably would need to fit this guy out with a Void Amulet, because he doesn't have Void Sanity. But seems like a pretty darn good chassis. Running around, teleporting around, doing... I mean, the other thing... What this guy kind of screams is he could do like St uh, Stygian Reigns or Stygian Reigns, which is really good for us. It's just kind of not super easy for us to cast outside of a communion, a big communion. And it's only our death cap mages who can do it. Anyway, we, we're kind of 
getting caught on a bunch of rabbit holes, but this is one of the ways... One of the things I can do at Enchantment 8 is just make one of these guys. And he could totally change the course of a battle. I, I, the problem if I do it is I actually would want to do it just for that, not really for the global part. The global part is going to cause unrest and other players... Well, here, are we patrolling? Well, this... Okay, you can see this place has 35 unrest. You basically are going to get hit by... Baleful, baleful stars every so often. Let's see if we can see any of these. Doesn't look like this has been hit. Has this been... I guess they don't show an event. But anyway, you're supposed to get unrest from it. I don't know exactly how that part works. The other thing that happens, though, from it is you do get within... If you have your dominion in enemy lands, which right now we really don't, there will be attacks of dudes like this, where it's a cultist and a few void critters. But if the attack wins, you get to keep the dudes. Which is kind of sick. It's kind of sick. Do I, I don't know if I have any dudes here that I've kept. I mean, like, these guys I kept. So, there was an attack here. These guys spawned with the attack. I think more guys did, but these guys survived. And so, anyway, you get to keep them, as well as the commander. So, you if, the, if stuff is in your dominion, you are going to raid them with, basically, generated troops. And then uh, you get to keep them. And the province. It's a pretty good deal. So if we get crazy dom strength, that would be a good thing to do. Anyway, that will piss people off, though. And I'm kind of... I don't really like... I mean, first of all, it's less fun to piss people off, and people will cry about it. I mean, I would cry about it if I were them. So I don't like doing it. And it will, like, encourage people to organize more, which... The only way that I think I get in a really bad position in this game is if people do things which do not advance their own game state like they are going to engage in a very hard unprofitable war with me because they think they must and i don't the only way people do that usually is if they're pissed off because it's not going to help normally people are going to help advance their own position in the game so anyway we'll see it's you know if people will get in a better position by attacking me i expect them to do that but i think it would really take an underwater coalition right now the underwater nations are all busy let's take a look at them pelagia has been busy eating macone i think i've already sent yeah i sent macone uh, a water bottle and some other things i'm sending a fire skull to juria this turn these earth gems are going to arethia where i'm purchasing for him it costs less than 40 to make the Atlas of Creation, but we're going to be purchasing it for 80, which I think is a plenty okay enough deal for me. Just getting having the booster when I need it can be really huge. It's going to help me get higher in Earth and higher in nature. Like, I don't even need a Moonvine bracelet, potentially. So anyway, it's super good. But Pelagia, you can see, has established quite a presence in the, in the med. And yeah, they come up here. They have this stuff. And then they're getting a presence over here where they're eating... These guys. God, I kind of want to watch that battle, though. I probably can. It's like I could watch that at the TNG battle. This one would be more fun to show you, but the TNG battle might actually affect my, my game. So anyway, that's kind of the reason for going Enchantment. Enchantment 8, we're just going to... The problem with Enchant... Or the thing with Enchantment 8 is not only are we going to have plays we can do on our own, like we can do fire... Uh, we can do fatigue plays, like we can do relief and rigor mortis and grip of winter and heat from hell, because we're going to have all the right paths, especially with us getting access to fire now. Not only are we going to be able to do all of those things, but we're going to have the resistances to be immune to it all. So I think it's pretty important for us. I just, I don't want to get cheesed anymore, goddammit. Yeah, what else? Oh, and we get this, which is just going to make us much better in combat. So... Yeah, I think we're, we're set up in a pretty good way. I haven't really looked at globals for this, see if there's anything that we should maybe do. I don't know if this lowers income. That would be kind of shitty if it did. Oh yeah, life after death, also really good. Which we will have, potentially. I don't have a ton of death mages rolling around with my army, but we'll have them at some point. And then Tower of Heavens, of course we are going to put up. So... Anyway, that's basically it for this turn. We've got more forts coming up than you know what to do with. We got a fort coming up here. We got a fort coming up here. So there's two more forts coming up. I don't think we're building forts over there. I was going to build a fort here, but then I had to I sold or I bought some pearls from 
from Satis. He wanted to get rid of some pearls and didn't want to send them to Arethia, which I kind of don't want to buy the pearls. I'm just doing it because otherwise they're going to go to Arethia. And I see him as a close enough contender it's worth worrying about. I can't remember if we're building any more for I mean, we've got this one coming up, which will be done sort of soon, three months. This army here is coming in here. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be real nice. If we take this, he can't get to this one. This one is such a good province. This is like almost a capital. It's got gym deposits, and it's almost 30k population. I mean, oh my god, it is so good. I really hope we don't bump here. In some ways, I'd rather send my god here. But I think... Well, I don't know. I think, actually, if we're fighting TNG, he's going to have a bunch of archers. I think we actually want to do this. We'll actually be in trouble if it's his archers, because the archers actually will pick away meteorite guard, or crossbowmen especially. I think we're just going to do this. And it's not ideal, but especially if he doesn't send everybody in his cap, this will do him much better against like 30 crossbowmen. So, yeah, we'll take this, and then we're going to take this. And we've got a nap, so he can't take this from me without invalidating our nap, waiting for it to tick down. And there's a lab here already, so we should be able to start making conjures literally immediately, which would be phenomenal. And we'll start fording it ideally immediately, too. I've got this guy coming, so he'll probably start work on a fort while I build a scout or something. Or Can I build a scout here? Build an indie commander. Do I have a scout nearby anywhere? Probably not, since I never have scouts at all. This place connects to a bunch of places. If I have scouts in any of them... Eh, God damn it! I don't think I do. Okay, but we're going to start making conjures immediately. I'm going to need somebody to fort... I think we do go ahead and do a slow recruitment commander. It's going to suck, but I think that's our best bet. But yeah, we'll be taking this. We'll be putting a fort in it as soon as we can, getting our blood economy rolling. And we're basically just waiting to have Enchantment 7 next turn to fight uh, Jotunheim. Oh, I did want to ping, ping him if I could. I don't think I have anybody that can ping. Oh, this guy can ping. Let's have this guy ping. I want him to know... Because he's going to know that we're coming for him. And I want him to have everything defending and do a huge-ass PD dump. And we're going to go there and gas the shit out of it. We're going to gas the shit out of it. So I think that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you have enjoyed. Our tentacles are beginning to wrap around all of these planets. And I will see you next time.